I'm Anthony Ruto, otherwise known as Tony. Uh, I currently work at Autodesk, Director of Research Engineering. My family background, I, I grew up in Kenya and I, I come from a tribe known as the Kalenjin tribe. I went to local school in the small town I lived in, so essentially I grew up in a, a small sort of farming town that focused on creating sugar, so sugarcane was what the crop grown. And then we moved from that small town to a large city, Nairobi, so Nairobi being the capital city of Kenya. And uh, at the age of 17 is when I moved over to the UK where I am now. As a child, I used to try and figure things out a lot, if I'm being honest, because I, you know, I was always amazed, like, how did someone come up with that? So then trying to break it down into this sort of singular components. You know, one other thing, just again, reflecting on this, is that beyond making things, I also loved drawing things as well. So when I left Kenya, I was in the final year of my high school. Um, and I went and interviewed at different universities. Um, my parents insisted on the Cambridge interview because, you know, you, you always want to shoot for the top. I would say my parents chose Cambridge and then I had to work hard to get in, um, is the honest answer. In my career, once I left University College London and I went, for, initially worked as a research fellow still in the university, um, I was part of a project that was looking at how you could take 3D body scans and then use that as your kind of digital profile to do things like online shopping of, of clothing, right? So this was back in uh, 1999. So we were already thinking about sort of online purchasing of goods like clothing, um, where you upload your body scan and you can drape garments onto your body and then essentially get the right size and custom garment for you. So the fashion application is very much, you know, the way they work is if you're gonna do a fashion line, you've got different sizes to consider because maybe you want to go from a size 6 to size 12 or size 8 to size 10. De depends on what you're targeting. Once you build the model, you can actually type in the parameters for what body you want to generate from it. And that shape can be used to create a dress stand, which is then the stand that the fashion designers are using to design garments for that specific sized individual. In other areas, um, like even in entertainment, so we've got video games to one side, but consider uh, characters in movies, virtual characters, that is. Like, consider like uh, the Gladiator. He has got a stadium full of these virtual characters, for example, all sitting in the stadium. The same model can generate an, an, an sort of limitless number of unique humans that can be draped and then placed inside the, the stand. And, and, you know, you can therefore use that, the same techniques in that context um, to, 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 to kind of you know, use these models in a way that, would not otherwise be possible. So working out on, uh, working out rather on a method to do accurate body scan representation was one of the key things. Um, with that accurate representation, you can then do things like uh, align the bodies to be able to create statistical models of human shape. So this is machine learning in its earlier days, right? We didn't call it AI in those days, it was just machine learning. Uh, we continue to do a lot of the investigations and explorations around what design paradigms might make sense in the future. Um, and the, the conversation was, we would like to create this structure that sits on top of an implant to help bones bond with, with the implant, right? If the, the, the implants are made of metal. So what can happen is if you don't have the right stress transfer from the metal piece to the bone, you end up with stress shielding and then the bone doesn't get any stimulus to continue growing. What the lattice does is it helps with the stress transfer to the bone because it's 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 not as strong it's a bit it's it's weaker but not too weak but it helps transfer the load from the the so solid part of the implant into the bone which stimulates the bone to then grow into the implant and creates eventually a much stronger bond between the uh, implant and the bone so coming up with the correct lattice structure was an exercise in figuring out mathematically how do we create a, a random pattern that can be the seed for a lattice. Um, and, and, you know, it is something that I developed again to, as part of this uh, des desire to provide a viable solution to create trabecular structures or lattice structures, which could meet a very specific medical need. Um, you know, there are a number of companies that adopted the technology. And so to this day, you know, there are literally millions of implants out there that have got this specific lattice structure on them. Um, it, it's been proven to be the most effective 3D printed lattice structure for that specific function. The, the, certainly the world is moving more into software in, across all domains. But then again, I, I'd say that the key one here really is around how can we create the right technologies that help people, designers, 
design a better world, right? We're thinking about the climate now, we're thinking about sustainable design, using what you have around you as your raw material instead of shipping new, new stuff in. Um, these are some of the things that we're thinking about. So innovation is something that, you know, I start on paper, my process is start on paper, as you imagine, um, the, the, the thing that you're trying to come up with as a solution. So I always find it more productive to start on paper because you can just scribble thoughts, draw sketches, you're, you're not hindered. Um, because when you get to the computer, now you have the restrictions of the software you're using, the tool itself, it's a keyboard and a mouse with a pen and paper, you've got freedom, right? So your freedom starts on paper. You can express thought on a blank sheet of paper, um, right? I mean, interestingly enough, I have a notebook here and I don't know if you're gonna see any of this, but this is just an example of me sort of sketching things out as I think about, I've got two lattice beams or three, how do I connect them to each other? What kind of geometry do I want to consider? So working on paper allows you to think more freely and hence come up with a better solution than um, you, you might do if you just dedicated yourself to the computer and just worked exclusively in code. It's very hard to visualize things and map it straight into, into software. Then when I get stuck, I go for a walk I, I, or a run. I'm more into running now. So, um, and that helps clear the mind. I think sometimes you do need to get away from the problem to, to get an, a better understanding of why things are not working as they should. Ba-da-ba-da